If, welcome along, everybody, to the live stream. Now, Chloe's asked me to do this. It is five in one reflectors unleashed. That was Chloe's idea. Well, thank you very much. Yes, that's. The hard bit is leashing them back up again, actually, isn't it? So uh, welcome to the live stream. If you're just joining us, put a hello in the comments. Give us a thumbs up and a like. It all helps with the algorithm. For those that don't know me, let me introduce myself. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey. I'm one of the presenters right here on Adorama TV, where we go live uh, twice in one day. What's with that all about? So um, I get to go first. Marvellous. If you're still here in three hours, then Daniel will be going live after me, just not here. So uh, thank you very much for joining us. I'm not here on my own. However, I do have some assistance. Wait a second, not Chloe. I can see she's desperate to get in because on the Super Switcher, I have the awesome Freya. There they are. Hello. And Sam on the comments. Hi. Hello everyone. How's everyone doing? We've got lots of people here. Would you like to know where some of them are from? I would love to I normally say to all know. of them, don't I? So yes. I can't do all of them. No, not all of them. <laughs> okay, so we've got uh, Netherlands. We've got Maryland, where the cookies come from. Yes, love Maryland Singapore. Cookies. We've got Germany. We've got Phoenix. I know that's in Arizona. Uh, and we've got uh, Germany. We've got Spain. Um, We've got Hampton in Middlesex. Oh, okay. Ooh, okay. Uh, Norway, a stormy Indiana. Ooh, Ooh. that sounds fun. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? And uh, Greece. Oh, I bet it's a little warmer in Greece than it <laughs> is in the UK. Although we've it's actually, actually quite had warm in here. <laughs> quite nice weather today, apart from the rain. Right, fantastic. I mean, amazing. Thank you very much for joining me. If you're joining live, then you get the opportunity to ask questions and comments uh, whilst we're going through. So do pop the questions in. If you're watching the pre-recorded, no, the post-recorded, if you're watching the recording, hello, recording people. Always nice to see you and um, say hello in the comments as well if you're watching the recording. Right, okay, let's bring Chloe in. Give it up for the awesome Chloe. Woo! So there is a whole shiny thing going on for this session. Can you get that vibe? So uh, we got Chloe as shiny as we could get her, marvellous. And we're gonna do five in one reflectors. So a five in one reflector is pretty much what it sounds like. It is a reflector that has five surfaces. I'm gonna try and use all five in an hour. Well, we'll see about that. We'll do our level best. And uh, try and create something that's a little bit kind of, um, Different. That's kind of my idea. Try and make these things different to how you would normally do them. I've realized I've already, already made a mistake. It's a good start. Hang on a second, Chloe. I'm just going to um, pop this over the other way. Uh, and we're going to start, whoops, with this one. So five in one reflectors, surfaces, white, silver, gold, black, translucent. Those are the usual five surfaces. Let's start with the white one. By the way, if, you, you, if you've got a five in one reflector, let me know in the comments, what do you use it for? Which surface is your favourite might be the better question. Uh, what's your favourite surface? There's a question I didn't think I'd be asking today. So uh, Alex said, uh, well asked, is the dress the sixth option on reflectors? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's certainly reflective. Right, okay, so white. Let's start with white. If there was one surface that I use the most, it's white. White is my go-to surface. It really is. It is perfect for this sort of work. So I thought we'd start with something fairly safe, safe fairly sensible. And as the hour progresses, they're going to get more and more crazy. So, um, uh, replies. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah. So, uh, silver and white, uh, the diffuser, uh, gold, right. Uh, gold. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Mainly, uh, white and black. Uh, uh, someone had put, this is pass, pass uh, I always forget the five in one has more than just white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, to be fair, if you are just using one, then there are reflectors out there that just have that one surface, and you might be better just getting that. A five in one is kind of a, um, it's quite good at all of them and not brilliant at any of them. That, that's kind of how it works with a five in one. It's, it's kind of, you know, the Swiss Army knife rather than the specific tool. So, um, yeah, let's start with white. I honestly thought everyone would just say white. So white is my go-to one. We've set a really simple beauty lighting set up here. I haven't actually done any of the metering or any of the testing for this at all. So let's do that. And let's get a camera and let's turn all this on. Wow, this is so not prepared. Hang on one second. So I'm using the new little transmitter. Ooh, I've got the new transmitter, which is okay as long as I remember to press all the right buttons in the right order. 
But then that's the same with all the transmitters. So I'm going to set my camera up for a few default settings. Chloe, I'm going to pop this near your chin. Okay, so I'm going to set this up for the flash sync speed, which for today's camera is 250th of a second in manual mode. I'm going to go for F8, ISO 200. And if I actually turn the flash transmitter off, because we know what's the first picture we always take in the studio. Here we go. First picture is always the same. It is. What happens if I have no flash firing at all and we get almost no Chloe? We're getting a little bit of Chloe because she's dressed in something super shiny. <laughs> so the, the video lights are shining off, but Chloe's face is basically gone. So I've got enough control with the lights in here that I'm kind of happy. Okay. Now I have no idea what that meter reading was because I forgot to check. So let's just eyeball it. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Whoa. whoa. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, that is maybe a little bit too bright, but that's kind of what a five-in-one reflector does. It removes the reflections from underneath Chloe's chin. If I do exactly the same, here we go, Chloe. Got the same settings. Okay, there we go. Very, very simple. Shadows, no shadows under the chin. The silver side will make it even more dramatic, but that's kind of what the white side is there to do. It's there to bounce quite a bit of light, but not as much as the silver. And you can adjust it by changing the height, but this isn't a tutorial about how to, how to use the, the basics of a five in one. I wanna try and get a little bit more adventurous than that. I might just check my meter reading. Let's just see where we're at. Hang on, Chloe, popping this near your chin. Okay, yeah, I'm about a third over. I can believe that. I've got a question. Already? Go for uh, it. It's from Matthias. What kind of adapter is the reflector connected to? Oh, okay. Should be in the video description. Uh, in the video description. If it isn't in there already, then I know Adorama behind the scenes are updating it. But this is a reflector holder arm. And uh, they're pretty, pretty low cost things. Um, I might have modified it at some point because I've had this one for about a decade. <laughs> so I've, I think I've changed the little the bit that connects to the C stand. But other than that, they usually come with a ball head, but mine fell off years ago. Okay, let's just see where we're at. Okay, so I kind of like this. This is okay, but it's, it's very safe. It's very sensible. So let's see if we can make it a little less sensible. We have another question. Please do. Um, so this is from Brian. Is there a recommended height for the reflector to be at? Yes, probably. I don't know what it is though. I mean, it's just out of shot would be my best advice, Brian. Uh, and it is just that. So I, I do keep it just out of shot. But bear in mind, Brian, if you do drop it lower, then the results can be uh, controlled by raising and lowering it. So the, the suggested uh, the height is what you like. And so if you see it and you like it, then you've got it right. If it's too bright, then maybe try lowering it. Just watch out for the edge. Sometimes I'll find I'll catch the edge of this in my, my shots. That's a little bit too high, I would say. Okay. So, silver side, the side I said don't use. Let's try it. Okay, silver side is a much stronger result. Much more uh, reflections coming in compared to the white, which is actually is not that much difference. Wow, that's, I was expecting a bit more, but I'm gonna live with that. It's definitely gonna be a little bit more catch lighty in the eye. Now, hang on a second, I'm using a new bit of software, so I need to just, Get my head around it, there we go. Can you see the catch light on the white is much softer. The catch light on the silver is much crisper. You can definitely see the catch light there. I think I did get it in focus. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> okay, so soft catch lights with the white, crisper catch light, the lower catch light with the silver. Okay, so that's, that's kind of silver. And it's sort of why I don't use silver for this setup and is exactly why I'm going to use it to get creative. Because that's what creative, creativity can be. It can be doing the wrong thing on purpose. Chloe, I'm gonna give you some sunglasses. Here they come. Whee! Okay, sunglasses. I might need a set of steps because I didn't wear my heels. I should have put them on, shouldn't I? I was going to, I really was. I think what's happened is you're going to a photography show, so you packed them. Uh, yes, yeah. they're, they're in the case already. Yeah. yeah, ready to go. Okay, so Chloe, can you lift your chin up for me? We'll do it wrong first. We'll keep going, keep going, keep going. Whoop, that's, that's great. If Chloe lifts her chin up, then the sunglasses that I've given her will start to reflect the actual 
well, light that's hitting Chloe, the light above her head. And the same is true if you do the opposite. So if you can, yeah, exactly perfect, thank you very much. Tilt your head down, then what I can get is the exact opposite. I can actually get light into those sunglasses. So I can create texture within the sunglasses like that, which is kind of fun. I like that. So that is a direct reflection of the silver, which is why I wanted to do the silver. It ties in with Chloe's dress. So we've got a lot to get through. So I'm gonna race through this a little bit because that background, that background needs a light, doesn't it? Let's put a light in. So light wise, for those that like to, to know what lights I'm using, I've got the Flashpoint Evolve 300 as my key light. And I've got the Flashpoint Explore 200. So the other way around, Explore 300, Evolve 200. Hey, live. That's my, uh, my backlight, let's get that in there. Get it in, that's it. So a couple of people have asked about folding the reflectors. So perhaps you could do that right at the end. As in folding? Yes. Is it holding? Not holding. Well, you can hold them if you like. <laughs> well, it's funny because often you'll see photographers ask the, the models to hold the, re have you had that? Someone says, hold the reflector. What do you do with your arms after that? You kind of, yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's all you can do. So if you're asking your model to hold the reflector, do think about their um, sudden lack of, of ability to pose. <laughs> uh, but folding, yes, uh, we had, um, I think it's on TikTok or it might be on Instagram, on Adorama, there is a how to fold video. It, how to do it in a minute, but I will, at the end, remind me, someone remind me right at the end and I'll show you how to fold it. Uh, okay. You've got a question about your camera. Yeah, okay. Oh, the camera? Yeah. Did you okay. switch to Sony? Uh, no. No, 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 didn't, um, didn't switch on. This is, oh, okay, all right, it's, it's, it's borrowed. Look, here's, here's the thing. Let's, let's go back to the other camera. There we go, okay. I want to use the new transmitter. Uh, the new transmitter uh, is going to be available for all camera makes, but at the moment it's not available for Olympus OM. So I borrowed. <laughs> I've got to give it back tomorrow. I've got a Sony. And then I can use the transmitter. I did try it. I got a Canon one and popped it on my OM system, but it just didn't really do what it's supposed to do. Okay, so a little light in the background, just put a bit of vignetting in there. That's fun, isn't it? Let's just do a couple more and then we'll move on. Okay, bring your elbows in for me, Chloe. Let's do some nice tight stuff. Okay, but this isn't a uh, tutorial about cameras. This is definitely a tutorial about lighting. So don't let that in any way make any difference to your photography. Okay, awesome. Very, very simple, but very uh, effective. Okay, that is white stroke silver done. Are we good? Okay, I'm gonna go on to the next thing because we've got lots to get through. I think it was what, about 10 minutes per thing, isn't it, if I do five surfaces? Right, what's next? Next, we're gonna do translucent. Can you take a question? I can, because there's okay. a bit of setting up to do, yeah. so now would be a very good... So, is a curved reflector good? A curved? Oh, I know what the ones you mean. Um, you mean the ones that are, are curved, so they, they kind of do that kind of thing. So your, your model's kind of like in the middle of a curve. Um, it'll, be, it'll be tilted that way if you were the model. Um, I've tried one once. I think that's probably the fairest thing I can say. I've tried it. It gave a very distinctive curved catch light in the eye, and I really wasn't that fussed about anything else. They're not, they're not bad, if that's the look you want to go for, but as a general thing, they're quite a specific tool, and as they're not a five-in-one, they don't really fit into this particular demonstration. But, you know, they're another tool for a job. Okay, translucent. Let's set up translucent. Uh, another question. Yeah, you go for um, it. Uh, this is from DLA Studios. What software are you using for capturing? Oh, okay. So, um, when I borrowed it off my friend from Sony, he was like, oh, you've got to use Capture One for this. It's like, okay, I don't have Capture One. I've seen Daniel use it. I've seen Seth use it. I've never used it. So uh, I understand it's very good. I just don't own a copy. So I'm using Sony's own um, tethering software, their free software, because I like the price. 
But if you were tethering, I would definitely go for Capture One as a more serious option because like all free software, it's, um, it's worth every penny that you paid for it. Okay, so let's get this on here and let's get this set up. Alrighty, so translucent reflectors or you see, they're not really a reflector at this point. This is kind of one of the things I have about a five-in-one reflector. Two of the surfaces don't reflect. But that's photography, isn't it? <laughs> okay, let's pop that up there. So I'm gonna get a light. Anyone see my light? Oh, there it is. And I'm gonna put it on a light stand that's fairly tall. There we go. I can turn the modeling lamp off. And we're going to use the reflector stroke diffuser part of the five in one the way it was intended. Okay, let's pop this up. Never enough room in the studio. Something like that. Okay, let's say that's exactly right. Now I might have just tied myself in one massive knot. Now, normally, if it was my camera, I wouldn't worry, but it's not mine. <laughs> that's close enough. <laughs> That's close enough. I'll get rid of the sunglasses, thank you. And let's see if it will do TTL. TTL, yeah, it's gonna be worth a try, isn't it? So first of all, I'm gonna do it without any diffuser at all, just so we can see the effect we get. We'll turn that one off. Clearing out the room. Okay, here we go. Okay, I actually quite like this. See, the trouble when you work with Chloe is the bad pictures are still good. Oh, if that was me in there, it really, really, I tell you what, you swap over, come on. You look through that end, press the shutter. That's not my camera, I don't mind. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. Yep, awesome. Look at that. Told you. Brilliant, good job. <sighs> you see, it's a, actually it's not bad, that's, that's all right. I mean, I've, I've had worse. Um, it's not the most flattering of light. And the idea with the, the diffuser is if you want nice soft lighting and you're running with the sun maybe as your light source or you're running with uh, a flash and you don't have the time, the space or whatever to set up uh, a soft box, then this will give you beautiful soft lighting. Let me just try and go a little bit closer. I'm also going to turn on the modeling lamp because it will help me. A lot, of, a lot of love for uh, Chloe as a photographer there, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, it's not bad, see? I would have appreciated it had they backed that up with Anne Gavin as a model. But I'm guessing maybe they didn't have room to type that in because there's a limit on the Actually, characters. Michael did say UK's next top model. Michael, so, thank yeah. you. That's, yeah. that's yeah. Yeah, I, I, think, I think so. I could have a go. It's actually really hard if you ever tried to be a model. It's so difficult. Okay, so this is fun, but have a little look. Where it gets interesting is down here. Oh, I'm pointing at... <laughs> <laughs> wrong screen. I'm pointing at the wrong screen. It gets interesting down here. This is the bit I really like. So this is incorrect. The correct shot should be something like that one or this one where I've, I've gotten, you know, nice coverage. But I really like that. I like that curve. And that's where we're going to get creative with this. So Chloe, if you want to just take a little step over that way, because I can move this. Oh, it's still got the sandbag on. I thought that was heavy. Let's move this over here. Something like that. Okay. So I've tried to increase the gap a little bit. That's going to give me a slightly sharper edge to the, uh, the, the drop off between the diffuser and the, uh, the, the bare raw harsh light. Can you see if I come around here? Am I in the way? Yeah. No, we're good, aren't we? Okay. Oh, it's the, it's the, I couldn't work out what it was on your head, it's the hood. <laughs> Got it. So I get a nice little curve. Now I'm using TTL here and you can see TTL's limitations when you start to really push it. So let's do it manually so we've got complete control. Let's guess one eighth power. That needs a little bit more output than that. Okay, let's just try that. There we go. It's quite a long distance to travel, so I'm actually at one half power. Can you take a couple of questions? Yeah. Um, well, I mentioned not exposure. Ahmed asked, uh, what's the flash power? 
uh, Ahmed is half power at the moment. My settings are still the same, 250th of a second, the flash sync speed for this camera. I'm at f8 for a reasonable depth of field, and I'm at ISO 200 because if I was at ISO 100, I'd be at full power on my flash. But the flash power, if you're using that as a guide, is of no use to you whatsoever, unless you're here in this space with these lights and this setup at that distance. It's a guide, but it's not a rule. The exposure is more important than the number you, you got there with, if that makes sense. Uh, what's your white balance, Matthias asks. Okay, my white balance is set to 5200, and that is a really good point because why worry about the white balance when you've got such a graphic picture? Why not go black and white? Oh. <laughs> I was just going <laughs> to read out another one, which was Michael saying, how would they look in black and white? Michael, they look like this. And bearing in mind, this is in camera black and white. So I would really take those contrasts up and give it a real crunch. I've no idea how I can set that in this camera uh, in the time I've got with it. But um, for today, that's pretty good. And in post-processing, yeah, definitely crunch up those, uh, those edges a little bit. Let's see if we can just drop that down slightly. There we go. Marvellous. Ollie uh, said you look incredible, Claire. Oh, thanks, Ollie. <laughs> How do you know? Did he, did he mention Chloe? Yeah. Oh, damn. <laughs> All right, okay, fair dues. <laughs> so, um, Zap F Photography asked, uh, are those walls helping to fill some shadows? So, yes, of course. Uh, Zach, absolutely. I mean, yeah. Zach. Zap. 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 Yeah. Zap. Yeah. Amazing name. <laughs> Can I have that as one of my middle names? Oh, that'd be amazing, wouldn't it? Anyway, um, so uh, Zap, yes they are. I mean, it, it's inevitable. Not as much as you might think, and sometimes more than I realize, is the honest answer. So uh, does that make sense? Sometimes I think they're not doing anything at all, and then I realize actually I'm getting quite a lot of bounce. But if I actually want to use them as a bounce, they're never quite as bouncy as I want. That's not helping, but that's kind of how it feels. Okay. Um, so yeah, that worked quite well. Enjoyed that. That was nice and simple, translucent. Let's do the, um, the one that nobody uses. Oh no, someone did use, didn't it? Gold. Yeah, actually a few people said gold, but I also saw somebody, I think they typed it in capitals actually, that they used it once and never again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty much in that uh, ballpark as well. So when I was, believe it or not, we actually do some practice and planning on this. When I was practicing and planning this, I don't know, what am I going to do with gold? Um, so uh, I've, got, I've got two things, we'll have a little look. But yeah, if you've got a use for gold, share it with everybody. Please tell us what, what, what is the gold essential for? So gold, there's a, a couple of things about gold. So my very first, this is my very, very first five in one reflector. Sam got me this, I can't remember how long ago. It's got to be over 15 years ago. Uh, the gold has gone a little bit kind of mottly. In fact, the, all the, uh, the shiny bits have gone mottly. It's, it's still going. Old gold. old gold. It does look like old gold. Um, some of my five-in-ones actually have this kind of effect going on, which is gold and silver, which I just think hints to the fact that no one really uses gold. So uh, I think we've got some replies with gold. Good. Okay, what have okay, we got? Okay, so we've got um, gold is nice to accentuate sunlight. Uh, gold is good for cloudy outdoor shoots. Uh, I've used gold to warm up someone's skin tones. Uh, gold, gold for <laughs> Werther's Originals. <laughs> uh, gold for buttercup photos. Uh, only for sunsets, maybe. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. So there's some interesting answers there, and some of those I kind of thought might be the case. And. And it's not that I don't agree with you, I'm just not sure that's necessarily the right answer. And I'll try and show you why I think some of those I would tackle in other ways. Um, okay, let's pop this in here. Chloe, you're going to go in the corner for me. Smash in. Right. Uh, lights. Let's get a light. Because I have a bit of an issue with gold. I'm pretty much the same. I remember using gold on a shoot. Do you remember, Sam, we did a, a shoot with... Uh, horse. Horses. Yes. yes. Gavin loves horses, so uh, <laughs> we should do some more shoots with horses, shouldn't we? I have nothing against horses. It's just riding them I'm not so keen on. Um, you know, they've got a mind of their own. 
Cars will occasionally do weird things, but you know, at least they're relatively predictable. I'd much rather have a car. Okay, so um, let's do it wrong before we try and make it any better. Because one of my expertise is doing things wrong. I'm really good at that. So we've got flash in there. Let's just pop it into TTL mode. Let's give TTL another crack. Okay, and what I've got is the gold side facing towards my light. So here's my theory. We were talking about what do we use gold for, and a lot of you said to bounce in warmer tones of light for whatever reasons, warm up the skin tones and what have you. So I've got my, my source of light, it's gonna hit here and bounce onto Chloe. And that's the idea. Let's see if it does. Oh, <laughs> being live, occasionally things happen. Can anyone work out the mistake I was about to make? I was about to make a really don't tell him, Chloe, that's just kind of that's like, ah. <laughs> I may have done this before. <laughs> and it is an advantage of mirrorless cameras because I picked up the camera and immediately realized, yeah, black and white. <laughs> okay, here we go, black and white with gold. Oh, it does make a difference. Ironically, it does make a difference. Okay, here we go. So. You can see that there is warmer tones. I have given you a bit of a, a kind of a suntan. So I've got that, but I've got a weird effect going on because now I've got both cold light from the flash bouncing off the walls, as somebody asked earlier, and warm light bouncing off the reflector. So I've got double white balance going on here, which is never a good thing if you really want to control light. Now you've got two. I mean, creatively, creatively, is that even a word? Can we have creatively that in the sounds like a place, doesn't it? Creatively? Yeah, creatively. Yeah, it's just outside Shropshire. Yeah. Yeah, yeah or Worcester. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I quite like it. I wasn't expecting it to be quite that good. Okay, yeah. So we've got warm shadows and, and colder highlights. But double white balance is a bit of an odd thing. Great if you wanted that. Nailed it. Uh, to try and make it a little bit more controlled, Let's put a snoot on. A snoot will allow me to stop the light from spreading so far. It'll just hit. Oh, we don't. Is that your toes? No. Okay. It'll just hit the reflector. How big do you think her feet are? <laughs> <laughs> You're wearing clown shoes today, Chloe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a question about your tether uh, cable. How's it attached to the camera, please? Oh, okay. Yes. Right uh, we can do that now. Here we go. So uh, at the bottom is. Uh, tether tools, tether block. It's not going to be illuminated on that shot, but there's a tether tools, tether block. So it runs through one of the channels, out the other side, and then into the USB-C, which is here backwards. There it is. Yeah. So all very safe because I've never, ever tripped over the cable or yanked out the cable from the other uh, housing, ever. <laughs> so many times. Okay. So this time we're going to get the full orange. Whoa, look at that. That is a little bit dark, but uh, there we go. So if this is what you were thinking, if this is what you were going to use your uh, gold side for reflecting gold in, why not just change the white balance? I mean, use the silver side and, and change the white balance. It, it, it might do exactly the same thing. If you want to have warm tone when you've got cold tone, as we had earlier, it does that. But in my mind, I've always just thought, let's just change the white balance. Or you end up putting just really gold light on someone's face so they look really orange. I mean, maybe that's a thing. I, I don't really want that, but that's just my personal opinion. So uh, I tend not to use the gold side because I haven't really found a use for it, but I'm gonna find a use for it because we're doing this live. And we're gonna use all five sides. Uh, Chloe, you're gonna stand, I'll put it behind you over there actually. And then we can see what's going on. So if you want to just step away from the wall, I'll put this in sort of here. Give myself a little bit of room because I'm not quite sure where we're going to put this. Uh, you're going to face that way. I'm going to face this way. Here we go. So I'm going to put the little light and just try and scoot it off the, the reflector. So I've tried to use the snoot to avoid the light hitting Chloe's face. I might need to come in a bit more of an angle to make that happen. We'll see. 
And so let's switch from TTL to manual because now I really want to be in control. And we're quite close, so maybe one eighth power. Total guess, no idea, could be right. Okay, can we lose the, the hood? There we go. Okay. And just turn a little bit more to your right. Other way around, left. Awesome. How cool does that look? Does that look all right? That, I think, looks pretty good. I'm kind of happy with that. I might just take it up a stop. So what I'm doing is I'm just skipping the light off the background. A little bit of light is bouncing off and hitting Chloe in the face. I'm using the shape of this because it's all so worn out and battered. Just to give me that kind of look, let me just go find an image on the screen. Here we go. How's that? Okay. There's a certain sci-fi feel to that. Is anyone else getting sci-fi vibes? Star Wars? You should give me a lightsaber. Which is the... Um... The, the the movie producing company is it? Oh, uh, that M one. MGM. Is it MGM? MGM, yes, with the gong. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'm glad you got it. Oh, totally with the gong. Yeah. Yes, of course. With the big gong. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Let's take a couple more. Let's, uh, let's see what we can do. I'm going to go wider. I'm going to come in closer. Oh, you, won't, you don't want to see the pictures. Nobody wants to see the pictures. Okay, yeah, good point. That's that one, I think. There we go. Okay, move my feet as well. What happens if I move around? Just take a little step this way. Oh, yeah, it's, it's rank, isn't it? Not MGM. Yes. Because they have the light. Rawr, that one, yeah. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> These guys have got you covered, haven't they? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Last one like that. Fantastic. Okay, that's fun. That worked out better than I thought. And that's how it goes sometimes. I had a half an idea. I actually was thinking of doing something else, but that worked so well I'm not, because the other idea wasn't as nearly as good as that. So that's all right. So that's gold. Hey, we are motoring on here. Pretty good. How many surfaces we've we done now? We've done white. Uh, we did translucent. And we've done, we've done three. We've done silver, half done silver. We're coming back to silver. Let's do silver again. Let's do it, let's do it. Okay. Three surfaces in 30 minutes. We are a room. Wow, <laughs> running to time. Oh, okay, uh, I'll come back to that. I'll tell you how. Sneaky, teaser. Okay, so uh, reflectors, they come in various sizes. And if I was to pick one, um, it would probably be, nope, not that one. <laughs> Hang on. I'd probably go with this one, okay, which is uh, about that height. So it's about four foot, maybe. I don't know, maybe I'm not that tall. Uh, it's, it's about, I think it's in the uh, video description, I think about one meter and a bit by something else, but round about that. Just to give you an idea, actually, it's, I know how to, the size you want, roughly the same size as your screen. That's how big it needs to be, okay? That's the perfect, perfect size. Freya loves it when I do that. <laughs> oh, so funny. <laughs> okay, well, let's get the bigger ones out, though. But I do have larger ones as well. So this is a little bit bigger. This is probably more like about five, five feet. Maybe a bit bigger than that, otherwise that makes me sound really short. <laughs> this is seven feet tall. Okay, it's absolutely massive. So we're going to do a bit with this. So what I'm going to do is mount it into one of these. So let's get this set up. You can buy all sorts of clever things for mounting uh, these in. I'm actually going to use the little knuckle that comes with the C-stand because there's a bit in here that's exactly for that. You just get it in there. Really wide. There we go. Lock it in. Try and find the middle, roughly. Okay, and now that's going to be held in place on the C-stand. That's quite uncomfortable, not doing that again. Turns out this is quite heavy. Okay, lovely. So we could use this in a variety of different ways. This is the silver reflector. We've seen how it's supposed to be used. We've seen how we can use it creatively. Um, how should we put this? Let's just put it 
put it there and see where we go. So Chloe, if you want to just stand in front of it, we use the gold side as a reflector. So let's use the silver side as a, uh, a reflector, as a background. So let's use the silver side as a background too. Anybody seen? Ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you can't see it, but off shot here on the other side of my studio, it's vast. It goes on for apps. It's like a, a warehouse hanger. That's why things get lost all the time in here. Oh, it's so echoey up that end as well. Okay. Can you take a question? I can indeed take a question. Uh, so Ahmed asks, is the boom stand better or the C stand while dealing with reflectors? Ah, okay. Um, if I only had one, it would definitely be the background holder. So these are, allow you to mount your reflectors horizontal. That one is only ever going to be vertical. So if you want to ever do it horizontal, get yourself one of these. It clamps on either end. There's a couple of clamps here. If I can get that up there, there we go. So those clamp on to the edge of your five in one. And then there is an extendable arm. So you can put it bigger or smaller. It won't go lengthways most of the time, depending on the size. So sometimes you have to go on the shorter width side. And as I say, usually they come with a ball head, but mine broke years ago. And you know it's mine, it's got my little bit of tape on the bottom. So I'm using, I mean, I don't even know if some bounce is still a company. Whoop, another way up. But um, I got that, I can't remember how long ago I got that. But that's often what happens with your gear. It kind of modifies and adapts over time. The ball head was fine until it wasn't. A couple of other questions mm. as well. Um, so uh, Alejandro asks, can you use the big one as a scrim using the translucent mode? As a screen? Scrim. Oh, scrim. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I hear what's going on. <laughs> it's like I've been to a trade show already and I'm half deaf, isn't it? It's kind of like, yeah, uh, a scrim. Yeah, absolutely. So that one is a five in one. Inside of that, the core of that is, I've got another one, hang on. Anyone see my other one? Hang on. The one. No, there's another big one. There it is. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is a, another one the same size because we're going to use two of them in a minute. And inside of here is translucent. Okay, so exactly the same. So it's a good point actually, Alessandro. So some of these have different surfaces. All of them have a translucent. Five in ones. I've never found one yet that doesn't have a translucent like that. Might be different stops of density, but they're all pretty much that. But what you will find is the surface order can change. So this one is gold on one side, silver on the other, black and white are the opposite colors because you can take this cover off and reverse it and zip it back on with black and white. Now that's not much use to me because I use white and silver most of the time. So I want a reflector that has silver on one side and white on the other. So although this is great, it slows me down because I have to keep swapping it over. By comparison, my favorite one has silver on one side and white on the other. Okay, so that for me is perfect, but it might not be for you. Oh, so you're getting a breeze over there. So kind of nice, there we go. Is that better for you? Is that better for you? There we go. <laughs> so when you're choosing a reflector, have a look at the colors and see if there is a, a preference on uh, color options for you. If, you. if you like one better than another, that might be the deciding factor. Right, where do we get to? Oh yeah. And also, one more. Uh, this is from Michael. Have you tried a Brooklyn reflector? Do you know, I was gonna mention that because I did hear there were some people who were using Pizza boxes as reflectors? Oh, I mean, come on, come on. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't used a Brooklyn reflector, um, but I have used a tray. We, we did a, 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 I think it was a workshop in a scout's hut years ago. We did a portrait workshop and I needed a reflector and I didn't have one with me because, uh, so I went into the cupboard and found a, a white plastic tray that had a lovely pattern on one side and when you flipped it over it was just white. Worked perfectly. Reflectors don't have to be purpose-built. 
if they're not in the shot and they do the job, that's perfect. This reflector is going to be in the shot. I will get to it. So, uh, message from Seth. Don't hate. Pizza box is the way to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm slightly jealous, I think. That's, that's kind of how it is, isn't it? Okay, so let's get this up here. So uh, my softbox, if anyone's interested, this is the 12 by 36 Easy Lock softbox uh, from Glow, Adorama's in-house brand. It is a great little softbox, love it. Very, very useful. Uh, let's just take a little test meter reading just to see where we are, because we haven't done one for a bit. Chloe, I'm gonna pop this near your chin. Here we go. F13, so I could either dial in F13 or turn this down two thirds. Of a slot, not my actually, I'm at F8. Stop in two thirds, there we go, F8. So for anyone that's interested, uh, oh, get my face out of it. These are my camera settings. Okay, that's my camera settings. Nothing's changed, everything's the same. Okay, so how does this look? Looks pretty awesome, it's a great start. Okay, so the silver I really like. You get that little reflection in the background. You get that hot spot and really dark spot. If you don't realize that silver can go very nearly black, yes, silver is shiny, but we get the perception of shine by its amazing contrast. Let's come down the side slightly. Okay, beautiful, love that. Have I got it on the screen? I have, I'm gonna do the other side. A little bit shooting into the light, so if you can look towards me, Chloe. Awesome, just turn a little that way, fantastic. So I'm shooting directly, not directly, very nearly directly into the light. Fantastic, okay, you get the idea. This is all right, isn't it? These aren't too bad. There might be a little bit of um, AI generative fill in the top right corner required. Um, or if you're old school like me, clone stamp tool. End result, exactly the same. But you get the idea, you can use these as backgrounds. In fact, that was so successful. Let's make it bigger. Let's do it again. Let's make it more exciting. Yeah, step out of the way. <laughs> so if, you're, uh, if you have a burning question, great time to get it in as I mess uh, around with more light stands. Uh, so someone suggested black and white with that. I think that could look, look good. Yeah, mm, we can try that yeah. for sure. Uh, and uh, Ryland said it's the genie that lives inside a Pringles can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm missing out that one. I didn't get that, Rylan. But uh, okay. Because silver, it's all silver. Oh, we see. The yeah. Okay. Uh, right now, thanks, Sam. Yeah, You're got welcome. it now. Um, so, uh, Cooley asks, have you ever put an AD200 in an umbrella softbox? An AD200 in an umbrella softbox? Yes. I mean, many times. Um, yeah. Nothing wrong with that at all. It's quite a powerful light. Uh, we did a whole video about uh, light output and how you might think you need a really bright light, but actually what you need is to work out the exposure you're going to get. Any light, whatever size in any size softbox will give you light. But the question is how much? Sorry about the off-camera noise. Setting a bunch of stuff up. Let's see what we can do here. So I think, Oh, let's do it that way first. Just talk amongst yourselves whilst I set this up. Whoop. I really should have done this lower down. <laughs> Boing. I got this. There we go. Anyone been on their holidays lately? Exciting time. Uh, so uh, Robin asks, what is normally in the part of the room where you're shooting? Uh, nothing. This is luckily um, a fairly dedicated shooting space. So I'm very, very fortunate that the, the studio that you're looking at is my studio. It is 15 feet by 17 feet, but a lot of that 17 feet is being taken up by Sam and Freya and all the live streaming equipment. So it's a little bit less than 15 by 17. Okay. We can always move if you want more space. No, no, it's fine. Uh, let's move these around. Chloe, do you want to step out a second? I'll just set these up so we can see them on the video. Okay. We'll take another question? Yeah, far away. Um, this is from The Fleeting Frame. Uh, I like that. 
Uh, what's a good size reflector if you're doing full body shots? <laughs> well, it, it depends on the look you want to go for, really, doesn't it? Um, and the surface you're going to use, if you're using the silver side, the, the point of light that you get from your flash is going to be reflected as a point of light. If you're going to use the translucent surface to diffuse that and spread that, then you might want to go for something larger. It's entirely up to you. If you're not sure, go for one that's in the middle of the range, something that you can actually store, carry and take around with you. And then they're not expensive. If it doesn't work for you, get a bigger one or a smaller one. Okay. Right, let's pop that there. Let's take a little flash. Here we go. Okay. So having spent all that time setting it up, I'm not happy. I mean, I'm happy with everything apart from directly above Chloe's head. Chloe, just keep your hands down a second. Let me just do a little test photo and we'll have a little look. So this is one of the problems. If you're thinking of making a great background out of reflectors, you end up with this, which is, they're not square. They aren't really rectangular. They are curved, but the edges tend to be straight, but the top and bottom bits you know, tend to be quite curvy. So let's fix that. Let's fix it. Let's get that in there by doing this. And we'll stick that up. So this time I'm going to change it around. We'll just try and center that up a little neater. A little neater would be good. There we go. Yep, it's hanging square. So this time I've got the long edge, the flat edge. And when I put that up against it, I get rid of that curve. Okay, back in you go. <laughs> I need a Seth, don't I? Like Daniel, kind of like set it up whilst you're working. Okay. And now I'm getting somewhere. This looks better. Uh, the TTL I think I'm in at the moment. Oh, and I didn't move my flash. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone saw that, and I think that's probably a good thing. No one noticed, you're fine. If you did see that, can you just rub that bit out of your memory? Just the last minute. I think when that you should say be that, do you mean the one that's currently on the screen? No, no, no. <laughs> no. Not that one. No, they can't see this. No, nothing to see there. Okay, just checking. No. Yeah, that's, that's all right. We'll, we'll take that out in the edit. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, here we go. Fantastic. So I'm not there yet. Chloe's already throwing her best moves. I can still see a little bit of the curve, just a little bit up there. Let's just have a, a closer look at that one. Yeah, so there's still a little bit of curve going on up there that I'm not too keen about. By the way, Chloe, your makeup is amazing today. Absolutely stunning. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of that by raising it up. Okay, there we go. That's pretty good. That's not too bad. Right off to the side, then it's not in my way. Yeah, that's better. There's always a little bit of cloning to do, but I'm kind of happy with that. Move around, don't get lead feet. Move your position, try different angles. So now I'm coming in with a light at almost 90 degrees to me, but I'm starting to see the edge of those reflectors. So I've got to watch it. There we go. Fantastic. Beautiful, last couple of pictures. Anyone tried this before? Am I the, the first person to ever think about this? I think I know the answer, but it wouldn't it be nice if everybody said, no, that is a very first. There are no original ideas in photography, only modifications of things that have happened before. But that's all part of it, learning, experimenting. Anything that you've not done before is always exciting and new. Okay, that's okay. I kind of like that, I'm happy with that. Can we have a quick review of one of the images? And then we'll set the last one up. Here we go. Okay, full screen, yes, look at that. Pretty cool. I quite liked it where I had the light coming in from the side like this. So I have uh, a lit side and a shady side. So I've got light coming in here, 
beautiful catch light in Chloe's eyes. We have a nice reflection over there, which is really good. And a nice glow going through. See, I like that. I think that works very, very nicely. In an ideal world, I'd have two reflectors with exactly the same texture, but hey, if you buy them at the same time, that's probably what you would get. Okay, right, last one. So I'm gonna break all this down. I've got one last one to set up. What's the side I've not used? Hang on a second. Um, yeah, stick it in the comments. What am I missing? Let's pop this over here. Pop that over there. Oh, hello. That's the ceiling, I think. Okay, let's pop that over there. Yeah, right, they're so. on it. They remember. They're watching. Yeah, <laughs> it's the uh, the black one. Black side. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's it. Which again isn't technically a reflector, is it? I mean, it will actually reflect. If you're hoping that the the dark side, the black surface of your five in one, yeah, I can't see you, Chloe. You're right there. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> If you're hoping that the uh, the black side is going to be like a, a black hole, that's not a really good place to put it, is it? <laughs> Should we leave it well, there? you know, some people might say it is. <laughs> I would like to put out either in all the shots. Here you go. That's the main one. <laughs> yeah, this is the side the one. That's right. that's... And this is the top one. <laughs> What's, wrong? What's wrong with that? It looks fine. <laughs> Honestly, I gave you three cameras. You always want more. Okay, let's take these down. Okay. So yeah, the black side, I was saying, if, you, if you're expecting the black side to be like this magic thing that sucks up light, like a black hole, that's not how black reflectors work at all. The black surface will block light, but it is, by and large, not non-reflective. So when you look at the black surface of a five in one, it isn't like, a, it's not like duvetine. It doesn't have a, uh, a completely matte surface. There is reflection, look at that, there we are. As I hold it around, shiny, okay? Black, shiny, black, you get the idea. So you'll often see people use them um, believing that they're gonna block the light. So for example, I could hang it up on the wall here to stop the light bouncing off and it would do something, but it won't do as much as you think it might do because it will still reflect light. Are they out of shot now? Well, okay, good. Right, okay, so Chloe, you're gonna come question. stand this side in front of this light. Yeah, of course, far away. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> something's popped up. <laughs> I can't see it. Oh, basically, can you iron reflectors? Oh, can you iron mm. reflectors? I if wouldn't recommend got creased. it. Um, these are all, all sort of nylon-y. Can you hear that? Okay, so they're, they're not exactly the sort of fabric you can iron. They're not cotton or anything like that. Maybe somebody does make one that's made of cotton uh, that is ironable, but these, these are, no, these would melt. I mean, yeah, iron it, could be creative, but um, yeah, it's not really There's good. a pole going on. So basically the pole came up across all of my comments. There's section. a pole going There's on? There's a pole going on. Um, of what colour people would prefer to use as a reflector. Awesome. So, yeah, but it, it came up over the question I was about to read and a load of others, so it's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry about that. Oh, that's funny. Right, okay, where were we? We were going to do uh, black reflectors. So let's just, first of all, set this up. So, Chloe, uh, we're going to do a little profile picture. You can look either side, whichever way you want to look. I don't really mind. Uh, just take a little baby step forward for me. So we're standing in front of the... That's it. Yeah. Lovely. Okay. So, here is a photograph. It is a white wall, lit white. Really a little bit too brightly white, but it's kind of lit very white indeed. Still can't zoom in on that one because I have to use this bit of software. There it is. Uh, it is seriously white. There's a bit of bounce off the wall, which is giving us light on Chloe's cheek. I mean, you know, I'm gonna use that to my advantage. I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna definitely use that to my advantage. But where are we gonna use the black? So I'm gonna use the black, not in the way that you might think. I mean, I could, you know, is that gonna do anything? Not really. I could get the big one out and maybe do that and spend the next five minutes 
swapping the covers around. Don't fancy doing that either. So instead, we're gonna use this creatively. You have to do that if you say creatively, that's important. Okay, Chloe, you might wanna step out of this one because it's really, really, kind of... there we go. Right, I'm gonna start stacking up my stands. I'm going to grab myself somewhere, here we go. A little one of these. And we'll pop that into there. So I'm gonna put the black round 22 inch, which is what this is, five in one reflector. Okay, gold and black. And inside is other colors, white and silver and translucent. Uh, I'm gonna put it here, let's just slide that down there. And I'm gonna put it directly behind Chloe. Now I think this is the wrong light stand. <laughs> Have you grown at all lately? Um, this is shy. <laughs> it's fine, let me use the right light stand. Okay. <laughs> this is why you have a variety of light stands because that one is definitely the wrong size. I knew when I put it on, it was just like, that's too tall. Right, let's pop this one in instead. Just tuck the leg under there. So this is a 20 inch riser. If you want to know what this one is, it is the 20 inch riser rather than the standard, much taller one. Can you take a question? I can, yeah. Uh, so Chris asks, is there a difference to a black cloth? Does the fabric absorb more light? Yes, 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 Chris, it does. Hang on a second. Let me go and grab this, okay. Okay, back. Okay, so this. Chris, I knew you were gonna ask that. I was literally waiting for you to ask. What took you so long, Chris? Uh, this is uh, duvetine or, or velvet, or it's, it's kind of like, um, it's not really velvety. What would you describe that as? Like felt, that's the word I was looking for. Felt type fabric if you're in the UK. Can you see how when I turn it, yes, we get a little bit of a reflection, but it is basically, basically black. Okay, so this is non-shiny. Um, it has a whole different feel. Um, it, it's lovely stuff and a fair chunk more expensive than a reflector. So yeah, these things, shiny, those there, the fabric is, is different. Right, you wanna come around this side? Let's see how I'm doing. Yeah, that's better, okay. Do you wanna just turn the other way just for a moment for me, Chloe? Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. So, can we see from that angle? Can you get the other angle? Does it make more sense? There we go, yeah, maybe it does, I don't know. I've got the 22 inch reflector. What I want is a round, black, dark circle directly behind Chloe. Something really dark, really moody. Let's see where we go with this. Let's just take a little test photo. Okay, like that. Now, because of how this is angled, because the light source, the, the main light, if you were here at the beginning, the only light that the camera can see is this flashback here, the light isn't really hitting the five-in-one black surface at all. So it is doing exactly what you would expect. It's giving me really, really dark, deep blacks. It's not completely black. There's definitely detail in there, bouncing off the wall and so on, but that's basically really, really black. Okay. So I've set that maybe a little bit too bright. Remember, this is a one light shot. So let's turn it down two stops. Here we go. Okay, so I can maintain that. Oops, I'm on the wrong bit of, hang on. I got you, all over it, there we go. So I'm just turning down the, uh, the white light in the background, and I might even go lower. Maybe we'll have it look like a little spot. Let's take it down another two stops. Okay, I think that's a bit too gray. Now I'm gonna keep it as white. Okay, so last test photo. Now we could move Chloe closer to the wall. We could put a reflector here and bounce a bit of light. In fact, you know what I said earlier? Never give your model something to hold. There you go, just hold that for me. Okay. There you go. Right, do some amazing posing with that. <laughs> it's like, it's, you can't, because this is what you end up with, okay? You end up with 
your poor model having to do this. <laughs> but it bounces a bit, thank you very much, Chloe. It bounces a little bit of light in, so we could use the silver, but I've got two flashes. So let's use two flashes. So the only job for that five in one black reflector that I'm gonna put it to tonight is as a, an object, a prop, a part of the scenery, effectively. Because it's the best way to find a perfectly round little thing to go behind somebody. I looked at trying to find things. I was looking at all sorts of things that could be round. Came up with all sorts of sort of things and, you know, uh, cake boards and stuff like that. And then I realized I've got a reflector. <laughs> Let's use that. Okay, so let's pop this out of the way. We'll clear the scene because there's enough light stands in here already. I'm going to put this just behind Chloe, something like that. Quick tip, if you're going to add a second light, it's very, very important that you switch it on. There we go. And now I've never got that wrong ever before, but I know there are photographers who are out there who, who forget to turn their lights on. <laughs> and, um, you know, I'm here to help. So sometimes I do do it wrong on purpose. Chloe, do you want to turn the other way around now? So you're going to face the light. And anyone see my, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I got this. I could just try and error this. Let's take an actual flash meter reading. Okay, here we go, Chloe, I'm gonna pop this near your chin. F6.3, I'm photographing at F8. So that is gonna go up a little bit to F8. It'll help if I adjust the right one. There we go. Oh, it's all touch screens, all fun. Okay, lovely. Coming back in. Here it comes, get my face out of the shot. F8, yes? Yes, F8, okay. Let's not say that that's the right answer, but it is an answer. Okay, now, before I take the, the shot, I'm gonna make a mistake right now. Can you guess what my mistake's going to be? I'm gonna do it on purpose. <clears throat> say that, because, yeah, here we go. Right, let's take the photo. Let's see if we can spot the mistake. I realize I've opened myself up to a lot of potential criticism with that question. <laughs> okay, I've made a bit of a mistake. I've included the, uh, the strip box in the shot and I didn't really want to. So Chloe, I'm gonna move you a little bit backwards. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> precariously balanced. Are we still in the shot? We are still in the shot. Okay, well, I've moved Chloe. I need to adjust my flash. Let's take it up to a quarter power. Whoop, that's a little bit too bright. I should have got my flash meter out. Okay, that's kind of cool. Right, so there we have it. We have this nice round circle going directly behind Chloe. We have a little bit of rim lighting coming around here. And see if we can find that for you. Here it is as I've got a light bouncing around my white walls of my studio. I've got light on Chloe's face, which is soft light from the strip box, but that black is really black. So we're getting two lights doing multiple jobs. Let's take a few photos. Fantastic. I've really got to stay square on, otherwise I lose the roundness that I've just spent ages trying to find. Fantastic. Somebody did ask about black and white and I forgot. So let's put it into black and white mode. There's not a lot of color in these pictures. So maybe black and white would be exactly the right way to go. Elbow in for me. Fantastic. Last couple of pictures and then we'll wrap up. Oh, we've got, oh, we've got one more thing to do, haven't we? I nearly forgot. I'm on a promise. Stop sniggering over there, you just... Uh, <laughs> terrible bunch. Okay, last one. Last picture is gonna be the most important picture I'm gonna take. I'm gonna come over here. Oop, am I in the shot? I'm over here. Chloe, can you just... Actually, I'll come around your side. 
There we go. Okay, cool. This is the most important picture I'm gonna take. Why is it the most important picture I'm gonna take? It's not the best one. It's not one I'm ever gonna use. It's the one that shows me the setup. It's the one that tells me where everything is. And I've gone to the side because if I take my setup shot from the front, where I would normally do it, I can't see the light behind. Okay, so setup shots, behind the scenes stuff, really, really important as photographers that you capture those, partly for your own records, but also any social media use. It's really, really useful to have a behind the scenes for, for lots of uses. All right, okay. Have we got any questions, Sam? Awesome. So there was one last thing to do, and that was answer the question, how do you fold the reflector? Which Chloe will now dem... No, I'm joking. Um, Chloe, do you want to step out for a second and I'll grab a bit of space. Okay, so how to fold a reflector. If you've waited to the end, well done. Um, here's how you do it. You get your reflector like it's a steering wheel, okay? Obviously a very big steering wheel. You get one hand and you put it backwards. So now you've got a steering wheel that you can't turn. And then now you're back to a steering wheel again, okay? Then you get the other hand, this one, and keep turning and it'll all fold in on itself, okay? Much easier when you do it quickly. That's good. Here we go, let's fold them all up, ready. Works. Okay. The other way for really large ones when you can't reach them either side is to fold it like a Pringle. Okay, so you get a Pringle and just keep going and it'll fold up on itself. Last one. Okay. Oh good, that's even bigger. Fold it like a Pringle, keep going and it'll just fold in on itself. Ta-da! That's how you fold up a reflector. <sighs> oh, yeah, I'm expecting lots of rounds of applause. Okay, <laughs> okay. Um, so that brings us to the end of our little five-in-one reflector tutorial. Hopefully you found that useful. Uh, if you have, terrific! Let us know in the comments, give us a thumbs up, give us a like. If you've enjoyed this sort of thing, you've got less than two hours to wait and Daniel will be live again from the Adorama store. So uh, stick around for that. Uh, I'd like to thank Chloe for being just awesome. Uh, we've got Freya on the Super Switcher and Sam on the comments did a fantastic job. Give him a wave. So thanks everyone for joining us and thanks for all your questions and all your comments. And um, I hope you're going to have a practice folding your reflectors at home. <laughs> Don't let them ping everywhere. It makes a right mess usually. It's only because he's got a big space I let him get away with it. Yeah, quite. <coughs> you should see yeah, and mm. also a thank you to um, Adorama for the, all the comments and the links and the poll and everything. That's been brilliant. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Thanks awesome. everyone. Uh, give us a like as... Gav said, and join us for the next one, which is four, four weeks. weeks. I think it's four time. weeks today. I have no awesome. idea what it's going to be. I think it's Chloe coming in for that one, isn't it? Yeah. Awesome. Chloe is going to be back for that. <laughs> uh, if you've enjoyed these lives, then um, then yes, Daniel is going to be live more often than I am, including two and a half hours time just over. And also check out Seth, who's live every Wednesday with Coffee with the Creators, most Wednesdays when he's not jet setting around the world. And if you want more live stuff, Adorama Events has got a fantastic YouTube channel, so go check that out. That is an entirely separate YouTube channel where they stream everything that happens in the Adorama store. And that brings me to the end of this session. So I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching. <laughs>